Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat, daily talk. Um, it's funny, I posted today Facebook Love, not Facebook Live. Yeah, well, I want to call it Facebook Live. Um, That's what I'm doing right now. Every day at 5 p.m., I'll give you more details about, about that at the back end. This is episode number 772. And the topic today is um, you don't need a relationship and what you need to do first or what you would ideally benefit from by doing first. I'll get rid of that word need out of this, challenging. Anyway, before I jump into that, let me, let me choose, let me try it again. Sorry, I want to bike ride, so I'm a bit pumped up. And I've got bruises to prove it. Um, before I jump into that, <laughs> let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. That's better. My name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't already know that. And if you haven't seen my broadcast before, and even if you have seen my broadcast before, I'm best-selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples for healthy relationships. Um, I'm also an inspirational speaker and a relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I do that, and also why it informs my talks and my work with clients, and also why these talks got started over two, two and a half years ago, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode number 772. And the topic today is kind of a rework of something I talked about before, so I just thought I'd try a different title, and I'll talk about some things that may be of use to you, so stay tuned. And the topic today basically is you don't need a relationship. There's a play on words in there, I'll get this in a second. And also what you want to do, what you ought to do, what you'll benefit from doing first or before when you're single. So if you're single right now, this will be useful to you. If you're in a relationship, it may not be so useful, but it might help you the next time, if there is a next time, I'm not presuming anything, of course. So. Let's jump in, shall we? First of all, the title was a little bit misleading because the thing is I said, you don't need a relationship and that's accurate. But the key thing is, is the word need. Nobody needs a relationship to feel okay. And I've talked about this many times till I'm blue in the face about the codependent paradigm that I'm focusing on eradicating and removing from our culture because codependency is an unhealthy way of relating to people and to each other, and to yourself. So, no, you don't need a relationship. You may want a relationship, and that will help, and then that, that will be answered more in the second part, which is what you want to do when you're single. I'll get to that in a second too. Why I believe you don't need a relationship is because the need for a relationship is a codependent reaction. It's a, it's, a, it's an effective way to be. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to go into deep, deep discussion about codependency because I've done that many times before. And in fact, I'll invite you to go look at my other broadcast where I talk about that because, frankly, I've said it many times. <laughs> Simplest way I'll put it is that if you're going to look for a relationship to feel better than you do on your own, you're going about it wrong. That's probably the simplest way I can put it, which is why I'm going to get to the second part, which is what you need to do, what you ought to do, what will benefit you if you do this first, what you'll want to do, before you do the relationship. And largely speaking, in a, in a simple like broad strokes, frame the whole thing so you can basically walk away with this piece right off top, is, and I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna have, how do I attack it? I'm gonna say it. Basically, I'll say it this way. You'll want to be self-sufficient. That's the simplest way I can put it. Again, I'm doing simple strokes and I'm gonna break it down because that sounds, oh, that's great, that's easy. Not so fast. Being self-sufficient is not the point of view where you're just arrogantly independent and you've retreated to your um, <laughs> your farm in the country and you're self-sufficient that way. I don't mean self-sufficient that way. We're in a very interdependent culture in this in this country. In fact, I was just um, watching some talks by a woman who is just retiring from Caltech. Caltech, I think. Well, the and she's talking about how this part of the world, Southern California, is extremely codependent. Or she'd say. Well, yeah, it's codependent. It's interdependent upon the, the aqueducts and water systems come from other parts of the, country, the state and other parts and other states. And in the event of a massive earthquake, the biggest, biggest problems can happen in this town, besides all the problems with roads being disrupted and stuff like that, is going to be running out of water because this town is not self-sufficient on water, so it's codependent. So I don't mean, and I go off, I don't want to tangent there, but let me come back to say this point. There are certain things, yes, that you would want to have a partner for, that you can't do on your own or you won't do on your own. Like, sex is a good point. It's much more, I believe, much more fun to have sex with a partner who knows what they're doing <laughs> and who you're compatible with and you have a lot of fun playing with. 
than doing it alone. Now, in some cases, <laughs> doing it on your own is better than being with a partner. But that's a different conversation, and I'm not going to talk about that here. Um, <laughs> yes, the self-pleasuring piece is another conversation. But otherwise, large part of the challenge that we face, a large part of large part of the patterns we run, the 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 racket we run, to use some language from another seminar, is that we think that somebody else is going to make us feel better. And that is an errant approach. Yes, that person can contribute to your happiness, ideally, and if they're not, why are you with them? But more than that is to really learn how to rely upon yourself and to do the work, whatever the work is for you, because it could be different formats, to really start discovering how amazing you really are. Because that's really what it's about for me and most of the work I do with my clients, is helping them remember how amazing they are. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? It's not quite that easy. The truth is, it's really coming back to the place where you learn, remember, um, up-level, transform how you communicate, how you connect, how you live inside your being. For many people, I'm aware of it, and I've, I've watched this happen, where people look in the mirror, and it's not a very flattering look. As in, when they look in the mirror, there's a whole bunch of tapes running about judgment. Oh, well, I, I, I don't, you know, my posture's wrong, I don't stand right, I'm too short and too tall, too much hair, not enough hair skin color wrong eyes aren't big enough small enough whatever that is nose shape we run most of us and I've included myself in that can run a litany of things that we can judge ourselves as not good at based upon looking in the mirror alone forgetting everything else just looking in the mirror alone can be a massively debilitating experience so well, first of all, I want to say stop that. <laughs> Simple way of putting it. But also, I'll, I'll add into the, uh, the suggestion is, I mean, a little little sidebar, my self-love practice, and I'll put the link in the comments, the self-love meditation I offer is using mirror work because it's harder and more beneficial most of the time to fall in love with yourself when you're looking in your own eyes. It's easier to do it with your eyes closed, with your hand over your heart. That can be easier some ways. And I personally think that if you can do it in the mirror, it raises this. It raises the um, this. What's the word I'm looking for? It raises the effort. It also raises the standards, and it raises the success. Because when you do it in the mirror, it will change something in your wiring. You can do it internally, but when you use your eyes, using the visual cortex, visual um, well, the cortex, but using parts of your brain tied to your vision, will absolutely deepen the connection between you and yourself. So self love works. That's why I use mirror work for that. And yes, the self love mirror meditation practice that I have has a whole bunch of audio it has it has um, an AMPM audio guided meditation in there as well which I'll put a link in the comments you can check it out as per usual um, yeah I've got some changes coming through as well that's 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 something I'm going to get to anyway there are many things that we can do with ourselves when we're single that can transform the experience we have when we get into a relationship the challenge for most of us is we keep thinking that you know we have this list of things that I'll do when I you know, when I have that relationship, then I'll have this. When, I, when I'm in a relationship, then I'll do this. When I'm in a relationship, then I'll feel this. Why wait? If you really want to have an amazing relationship, don't put all the pressure on that person. It's better to do it on your own, I, I, frankly, to transform your own life, to come to a better relationship with yourself. So when you're in a relationship with that spectacular, wonderful person, it's easy and you get to contribute to them as they get to contribute to you. In fact, all the stuff they give you is, is just overflow and abundance and it's wonderful. And there's no um, requirement on them to deliver a certain amount for you to, for you to feel okay. That's the trap everyone falls into. That's the trap of codependence. So my message here is simply, is especially when you're single, is that's when that's the best time to focus on you loving you, you appreciating you, you respecting you, you trusting you, you being more confident in yourself, all these different things you can do easily. One of the things I've been working on, as I've mentioned this a few times and I'm still putting the finishing touches on, is a new pro new group program I'm, I'm launching shortly. It's going to be a beta test so you can get in early and get better. Anyway, there's a deal on that called Coming Home to Yourself. And when you're single, it's an absolutely perfect time to do this because the elements in that course as I already mentioned, those things about coming home to yourself, loving yourself, you know, falling in love with who you are, falling, you know, learning how to trust yourself, appreciate yourself, um, feel confident in yourself, all these different things are part of that course. So that's why it's on my mind a lot, really, too. So 
just to let you know that that's out there for you. So again, those, those links will be in the comments. But my reminder to you is simple, is that you have the freedom, you have the ability when you're single to choose yourself first. And again, you don't need a relationship. In fact, you don't need a relationship for any of what I'm talking about, but it's nice to have one. So choosing a relationship is absolutely wonderful, but there's no need involved. When you need a relationship, they're coming from a place of neediness, duh, <laughs> but also coming from a place of lack. And that's not the best way to come into a relationship because frankly, if someone came to you and you want to be in a relationship with you and they come from a place of lack, how would that feel? That is the feeling you don't want to give someone else, I would trust. So this is my simple reminder, just an encouragement. And I've talked about this many times the last few weeks. So if you want to find out more about the details of codependence and things about the traps you fall into, I would definitely go scan my previous broadcast. I'll give you the links where you find my replays um, in a moment too. So you can go and look at those and consider for yourself where maybe you're out of alignment with your own self-support, your own self-trust, your own self-love, and, and why you might be putting that pressure on somebody else that you haven't even met yet. Don't recommend it. Learn to love yourself first. Fundamental. It's one of my things I'm talking about a lot. If a friend of mine was talking today, um, or she's a message today, commenting on one of her posts about how we forget we have a choice. We come from this place of lack thinking there is no other choice. You have a choice and you can choose to love yourself first. That is the bottom line I want to give you now. It's what I'll help you with if you're stuck, if you're challenged by that, if you say, yeah, well, I would, but I'm, I, I judge myself for all this stuff that happened in the past. You don't need to do that. And I can help you with that. So all the things that we run against ourselves as reasons why we can't love ourselves, none of them have the right, the place, or the authority to stop you loving yourself. That, you have the, that's my authority. That's, you have the authority from me. <laughs> you, you, anything you've done in the past, anything you haven't done in the past, anything that was done to you in the past, has absolutely no control of you loving yourself. Yes, you may need to do some work to heal those parts. That's a part of my work in my coaching. But it doesn't stop you loving yourself. In fact, when you love yourself is the best way to start healing those past wounds and traumas and hurt from past experiences. So if you want to learn how to heal that stuff, start by loving yourself first. Love yourself now. And with that love, you can go back and heal everything in the past. That's a lot more than I'm talking about here because that's one of my, one of my more, um, that's the deeper work I do with my clients. But it'll get you started. So love yourself first. And then when you're adding to that all the self-support, self-love, self-trust, self-care, all these different things, then you can choose a relationship from a conscious choice of expansion, not from a lack or limitation. I wish you that's the way you do it. I wish that's what you, ha you choose, how you do it and what you get, because frankly, it's absolutely, for me, fundamental. So with that, I thank you for watching my broadcast. This is my daily chat, by the way. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. So the links so you can find the replays. I mentioned you can look at my replays for other talks. Personal page is Barry Selby on Facebook. Business page is barryselby.author, which is where the replays go. And also onto my YouTube channel, because I have a YouTube channel where I have all of these stored, all 770 plus. Um, if you go to my channel, which is Barry Selby, please subscribe to my channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. That contains all of my broadcasts, just as my business page does, but on my YouTube channel, it's more condensed. There's nothing else in the way. And on the playlist, rather, which is Messages from the Masculine, you can, you can scroll through all of those and you can search for keywords, which can help you find what you're looking for. I'm biased about that. Um, again, I'll put links in the comments for my book, for the self-love practice, for coming home to yourself, and for a discovery session with me sorry, a clarity conversation with you because those four things will give you some support and uh, that we can reach out to me. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, you can put in below and I'll respond when I sign off. I hope this has made sense to you. This is basically a pivotal part of the work I do. It's become primary in my work with my clients because it's so obvious now every time this is what's in the way is the lack of love for ourselves. So love yourself first, love other people second. That doesn't come out right. Love yourself first, then love other people. That's better. <laughs> I don't want to put set people second place. But put yourself first. That definitely is the case. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Um, probably 5 p.m. We'll see. I'm going to be out and about tomorrow, so we'll see what happens. And, uh, and that's about it. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.